You're listening to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast, the show that proves no one stumbles upon success ever. With your host, Lou Need. Every Mondays and Thursdays, we deliver cold heart evidence behind the power of a robust morning routine. Get ready to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Looney Lewis, and today I have the honor of introducing a very special guest to the show. Morning enthusiasts, let me ask you, do you want to spend five minutes to save hours per week? Well, so do I. My next guest shares a very alarming fact with me. She said we are distracted every 11 minutes and it takes 23 minutes to refocus after an interruption. Wow, that is bizarre. So that's why I had to bring her on to teach us how to save our biggest asset, time. Today, I want to introduce Alexis Hasselberger. Alexis is a productive time management and efficient expert. She spent the first 15 plus years of her career managing operations and HR at several early stage startups where there were, there was always more to do than people to do it. Alexis believes that work-life balance is essential for everyone, even though the definition may be different for everyone. As a As a result, she began to develop and implement productivity systems in the companies she worked for and and also in her personal life to ensure that goals were met, balls were not dropped, and that most importantly, she and those around her stayed sane. Her productivity and time management system techniques, tricks, and hacks can be customized to any team, individual, or household. She's tired of wearing many hats, and so (laughs) that's why we're bringing her on the show. Alexis, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on board. I'm looking forward to talk about productivity and time management. And of course, towards the end, your best morning routine ever. Awesome. Me too. This is my favorite topic. (laughs) Excellent. (laughs) You know, about your background, you work with for startups and having to wear multiple hats um, over and over again, you kind of solved a very niche problem. Tell us about um, your background and, and what is it with you in time management? Yeah. So, you know, as you mentioned, I worked in startups and I ran operations and HR and finance and things. I used to say, you know, I've done everything in a startup except for sales and engineering. Like when you're in a company with just a few people, like you really do have to do a lot. And so, you know, what I learned pretty early on in my career was that, you know, we've all got a superpower and my superpower was the ability to get a lot done and not work long hours, (laughs) which was amazing (laughs) for me. Mm -hmm. Um, But what I also found was that that it was not common. Like this was the, what I felt like came pretty easily to me and maybe it's, you know, looking back 2020 hindsight. Right. But what I felt, you know, I was able to put in systems in place, et cetera. It just wasn't coming easily to other people. You know, I saw a lot of people working really long hours or being stressed out all the time. And, you know, I, I wasn't, and it's because I had systems in place and I felt the same thing when I had kids. Um, lots of people are very stressed out going back to work and, you know, I worked full time and I had kids and it just wasn't as stressful for me as it was for other people. Uh, so after many years in that startup world, I realized that not only was the time management and productivity piece, something that, you know, was super fun for me. Cause I love to geek out about like sort of streamlining things and making things more efficient because I love having time for myself, but that it was something that really other people needed and they weren't able to find on their own because, you know, just downloading a, you know, an app or reading a book, that's often not enough to, to really create behavior change, which is what's required to be able to get everything done and still have a life at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So you are helping um, the people you work with, with being more efficient. Yeah, exactly. So at a certain point, I think people started noticing how efficient I was. And, you know, I remember at one point I had a a boss, the CEO of a company that I worked for, who just said, hey, do you think you could do a productivity workshop for the rest of the staff? And I thought, yeah, I could do that. That sounds really fun. And so I did. And that kind of is what got the I think the ball's turning in my own head about, oh, maybe I could make this be my job instead of this just being a part of what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Tell us about the systems that you have in place because you don't you don't have a, a 
computer engineering or infrastructure background. So what, how do you um, put your tech, your systems together? Yeah. So when I say systems, I mean it, mean it really broadly. So it's uh, systems of thought. It's kind of the way we do things. I, you know, I teach a task management method that I've kind of developed over the years that really works with any platform. So it can work on any app that can work on, you know, paper, if that's what, you know, that's the thing that, that you really like using. Uh, it can work on a spreadsheet. So I really think when I talk about systems, it's about how do we remove from our brains all of those things that we have to do and put that someplace where we can easily prioritize it so that nothing falls to the cracks and we're not left remembering all the time. You know, I think we often just leave all this stuff in our heads and, and then we're, we're trying to work and we have these thoughts coming in like, oh, I need to buy my niece a birthday present next week. And, oh, you know, my I think my driver's license is going to renew next year. And, you know, all of these thoughts that distract us. Uh, and as you mentioned, those stats at the top, right? Every time we get distracted, even if it's just a distraction by our own thoughts, it's taking us, you know, 20 minutes to refocus. And so when I say systems, I just mean how, what, how do we methodically think about all the things that we need to do so that we do not have to remember to do it. Mm -hmm. And even some of those um, to-do things, to-do list things can keep you up at night. There's yeah. a there's a great fun, um a great train of thought that's referred to a mind dump, right? Yeah, right before going brain dump, right before going to bed, and so just being able to jot everything down so that you, it's out of your head, you can actually relax and fall asleep peacefully. I totally agree, and I actually recommend that. I think the brain dump is is a really great stress relief technique, and that you can use it at many points during the day as well. So I always recommend to my clients that they do a brain dump before they leave work in the evening, so that they don't have those work thoughts, you know, infiltrating their home life. And also, you know, anytime you're feeling overwhelmed during the day, if you just sit down and do a quick brain dump, you usually can list off four or five things that are kind of circling around in your mind. And once it's out of there, you can say, okay, I'm going to do this one first, this one second this one third and your brain stops kind of rehashing it over and over so yeah finding a way to prioritize i am a advert like calendar girl write my to-do list sometimes i even put in there eat <laughs> just <laughs> as my as minute as that i put that on the list just because i yeah. love the idea of checking things off and i use a red pen just to feel accomplished <laughs> like I, I tackled something yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think that what you've hit on there, too, is something that's really important, that doing things like eating or exercising, they take time, right? Yeah. And if we don't kind of, uh, you know, account for that and put it in our calendar, et cetera, either we can kind of go the whole day without these things happening because we get focused on whatever we're doing, or really, we just don't make time for them. And so we then other things end up being pushed because, you know, we thought we had eight hours of the workday, but we didn't account for, you know, the hour that we were going to need to eat and go to the bathroom and things like that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of us don't take that in consideration. I didn't either. I mean, I put it on a list because I it has to be done, but mm -hmm. you're absolutely are correct. It is time consuming, even if like preparing your meals, like yeah. you know, they say the, uh, the entrepreneur is always saying the morning routine starts start the night before your day starts the night before, because you got a meal prep, you got to um, get your clothes ready the night before so that you can free up some t um, time during the yeah. day to do more. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with that. I, you know, I, I definitely advocate doing, you know, and when we, get, we talk about my morning routine, you'll see, but I advocate doing as much as possible for myself the night before, because I'm not a morning person. <laughs> Yes. So tell us how do, how can one spend five minutes to save hours per week? So yes, this brings us back to the statistics about distraction. So when we, you know, when we say we get distracted almost every 11 minutes on average, that it takes us 23 minutes to refocus every time. It's kind of this Sisyphusian effort happening to us every day. Most people who work in offices spend about a third of the day just recovering from distractions. So if we want to spend five minutes to save us hours, what it really is, is setting up our environments to remove some of those distractions. So turning off notifications 
notifications for email and Slack, uh, setting up our environment in such a way that it's free of clutter so that our mind is not, you know, focusing on all these peripheral things. Um, it's things like putting our phone at a, in a place where we can't see it necessarily, right? Putting it in our bag or on the desk drawer so that it's not this constant distraction. If we can remove even just a few of the main distractions that we have in our lives, we will save hours every day. Dilly <laughs> noted. This is great stuff. What about entrepreneurs? You know how, especially you've been in a startup um, mm -hmm. environment, you know how entrepreneurs are like wearing a hundred hats all at once. They're doing all marketing, they're recruiting, they are running the business, they're working in the business, they're working on the business. How can entrepreneurs learn to prioritize effectively? So I think, you know, as an entrepreneur now and having worked with them my whole career, I think one of the most important things is saying no. I think that so often, especially when we first started our businesses, we're just saying yes to everything, everything, everything. And then we keep staying in that mode, even when we've had some success. And I think the reality is that we need to say no to more things because when we say no to the wrong things for us, then that leaves space for us to say yes and to focus on what the right things are, or even just leaves space for opportunity. So for instance, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and you're saying yes to every interview request, right? Mm -hmm. You might not have time available to you when a big, interesting client or project comes up. Right. Right. You need to be able to say no to things in order to say yes. And I think also that means saying saying not right now to a lot of the ideas that we have. So, you know, we have I, I think my my to be prioritized list and my task list for my business has probably 200 items on it. I am not trying to do all of those things right now. I pick one or two goals per quarter and I really focus in on making as much progress as I can on those things specifically, knowing that the next quarter I will have another opportunity to select a few things that are really important that I want to focus on. But if we try to do everything at once, we spread ourselves really thin and we end up never making real progress on anything. Yeah. Oprah Winfrey has a really good quote that says, you can do everything, just not all at once. Right. Right. Yeah. I think that's totally true. Yeah. Because you need the 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 brain with, if that's a word, I'm making up words right now, <laughs> to actually focus and actually give it your undivided attention. So you can, like you said, make, make real, real tangible progress. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I, th I think that's really hard too, because we have this sense, especially as entrepreneurs of, we have to do all of these things. Otherwise we're not going to succeed. And, you know, there's a, there's another quote that I love that is to do two things at once is to do neither. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that one too. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, so I tell me about coming from HR, you are shrimps you're certified you mm -hmm. have been in hr for years how's the journey transitioning from hr to entrepreneurship for you so it's been i think it's been a really interesting one you know as as mentioned i worked in startups so hr was a significant part of my job but not the only piece and i think that um, one, I saw, you know, kind of all the components that go into sort of the back end of running a business. I think that a lot of times people don't realize that, you know, HR's job is to make sure everything's running smoothly on the back end and that, you know, our human resources are happy, et cetera. Um, and so I think for me, the transition has been kind of gradual in a way because I felt like in my previous roles doing HR, I was helping a lot of employees. I was often helping them with things related to, you know, systems, um, creating ways for them to streamline their work. How do you create a to-do list? How do I not burn out? A lot of things like that I was actually doing. And now I just, as an entrepreneur, have decided to focus solely on that. Uh, and I think that I have a lot of benefits in starting my business in that I did run the back ends of things. You know, I've run payroll before for many years. I know how to look at a PL and, um, you know, and my balance sheet and all of these things because I, that was part of my job as finance and HR. And so, you know, it's also interesting, I think, because a lot of the people at times when I work with corporate clients, I'm often speaking to their heads of HR or their, you know, learning and development people. And those are roles that I really know so well. And I can see those pain points that they have in terms of their own employees and productivity and burnout because I've been in their position. How long have you been um, 
doing your own thing? Just about two years now. So yeah, I opened up the business in the beginning of 2018. Oh, wow. Very nice. What are some of your strategies and techniques to help others preserve their playtime and give their brain a rest? Yes. So I think, you know, one thing is to set boundaries and to set them early. So one thing I advocate, whether you work at home, whether you work for yourself, whether you work in an office for other people, is that we have an end time every day, right? That it doesn't have to be the same every day, but that we are picking a time after which we are no longer going to be focusing on work. So maybe that is when you get home, you know, just your commute. Maybe that's the time where you stop working. Maybe it's that you are going to check email for 15 minutes after dinner. But at eight o'clock, you're going to stop. Um, whatever that is, really picking a stop time, I think is so effective. Um, one thing that I really noticed when I had kids the first time and then I had to leave uh, at five o'clock because I didn't want to be late to pick up my kids from daycare was that I became instantly more productive. <laughs> when I had a stop time, I knew that I just, I had to pack it all in. And, you know, that saying that work expands to fill the time allotted, I think that's true. I mean, we could work all day long till midnight every single day. There'd still be a full day's work tomorrow. Right. So I think that's one thing that's really important is really getting clear on your boundaries there. Um, Another thing that I uh, think is really important for people is how do you deal with incoming messages? You know, we have so many, we get so many emails, we have Slack, we have texts, et cetera. And a lot of people just have their constant default mode is anytime they're in the finish of something, they're checking email and Slack or anytime, even in the middle of something, they're checking email and Slack. And we're not always dealing with the things that are coming in. We're just checking. And so I like to flip it in my head to say, instead of checking, I'm processing. So when I get into my email, I'm handling each email once. I'm touching it. I'm either responding to it or I'm archiving it or I'm adding it to my task list. And then I'm moving on to the next one. Uh, And I do that until everything gets down to zero. Same thing with Slack so that it doesn't feel like this never ending thing that I can't accomplish. So I think that's something that's really effective as as a framework as well. When I talk about systems, I'm often talking about frameworks for things. So, you know, prioritization frameworks and frameworks for how we handle email and those sorts of things. Yeah. Your your example with the 5 p.m. end time, uh, setting that boundary, it's crucial um, yeah. because you think about it, a lot more get done the week or the day before someone goes off vacation. Right. You're so right. Right. Because mm-hmm. they know there's no leeway there. And I think you know, when, when we do that too, it also, also helps us show up for the other things in our life that we want to make time for, right? If, if we say family is important to us, but we're working until 10 PM every night, well, what is that really saying about our values? Emails and incoming messages are such a time killer. I mean, the, we do, you're absolutely right. We're just checking. We're, we're not really responding. We're not really addressing the issue because it's going to be, it's going to pull us away from what we're working on. So I agree with you. We should probably just allow a lot the time to mm-hmm. actually address it instead of just clicking, going to see who it is and what right. they say, and then come back to it. That's really like yeah, <laughs> wasting time. Yeah. If we can, I mean, I, I check email or I process email about two to three times a day, but I get my inbox down to zero every time I do it. And I think that's, that's kind of the key is that I'm not in there. I'm not worried about what's there. I know that the next time I get in there, I'll be able to deal with it because I've allotted that time. And, and like you, I put it in my calendar. I block off mm-hmm. the time to handle what I know is coming. Yeah, I do a lot of time blocking myself because I know um, I cannot multitask. I suck at it and I'm, I'm, I claim it and, and, and own that because if I if people don't hear from me, if they, they don't hear from me, they email, they don't hear from me, they know I'm like not looking at my inbox. So they right. will call me or they'll drop by. Like, did you get that? I was like, no, because I'm working on this one thing that I need to finish and I cannot go back and forth. So I really understand your your when you say set boundaries. And I also know that I try to email you on a Friday and I got a response from you that says, I am away for the weekend and I'll tell you why on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. I, yeah, I put an out of office reply every Friday. And, and the reason that I do this is one, 
one of my boundaries is that I don't do email on evenings and in the weekends. And so I, um, in order to keep myself accountable, I have that auto reply because then I, well, one, people know to expect a response next week and they're not worried about it or emailing me multiple times over the weekend. But also that keeps me in check because I know that because I've said I won't be responding until next Monday, that if I do respond before then people know that I'm, that I'm not, um, sticking to my word and integrity is important to me. Yeah, no, I I thought that was funny. I was like, man, that's pretty, (laughs) that's pretty badass. (laughs) Thank you. And also, I just want to point out, you're not bad at multitasking. Nobody can multitask. Like multitasking is this total myth that's been purported upon us, but the science shows that our brains just can't actually do it. So you, I commend you for doing one thing at a time and really focusing on it because you're, you're essentially just accepting reality. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Thanks. So tell us, how do you get up, dress up and show up? Tell us about your morning routine. Okay, so this may be different from a lot of your um, interview guests because my routine morning routine is very short because I am a person for whom waking up has been the hardest part of my day since I was five years old. Like I am a total night person. I am not a morning person. So I'm going to tell you what my morning routine is and then I'm going to tell you what my evening routine is to help me get set up for that. Okay. So okay. my morning routine is really that. I essentially set my alarm for about 30 minutes before my first meeting of the day. Um, it's, I'm usually waking up around 7, 7.15 because my kids are getting ready for school and things and my meetings are around 8. And then I spend about 15 minutes just brushing my teeth and you know putting a comb through my hair and putting my clothes on and making my coffee. And then I just enter my office. That is literally it. I am just (laughs) brushing my teeth, putting on my clothes and coming into my office. I work at home, so I don't have a commute. And that's my morning routine. But to make that so efficient, to make that happen, it means that I do everything else the night before. So I am essentially putting out, setting out my clothes. I, um, I'm not a breakfast person, so I don't deal with that, but I make sure that I have the like, coffee already ground and that everything is, is ready there. I make sure that my kids have made their lunches the night before. I don't do it, but I make sure they've done it because I don't want any messing around in the morning. Um, I, you know, I, I look at my calendar the night before so that I know exactly what's on my plate. And I look at my task list the night before. So I know exactly what's on my plate for the next day. So that when I come into my office, I just hit the ground running. Uh, So it's a short morning routine, but it's because I've put in so much work the day before and that I really value my sleep. And to me, an effective morning is a morning where I've gotten the most amount of sleep that I can. So preparation the day before. Now, Mm -hmm. a lot of the entrepreneurs that I've spoken to, um, we're talking about meditation, we're talking about reading, we're talking about hydration, we're talking about exercising. None of that happens for you? Not in the mornings. I do all of that the day before. So because I am not a morning person, um, I really, so I, I usually do my workout. I usually go for a run when um, in the, the between of when I finish work and when I start cooking dinner. So that's kind of my ending routine for the day. Uh, I read every night after when I go to bed, my kids go to bed around 830. And then, you know, sometimes I watch TV, but most usually I'm, I'm reading during that time. I think that's really important. Um, I used to meditate some but I'm a person for whom meditation, I, you know, I, I've gone several months of meditating daily and I, it just isn't something that really helps me. Uh, and I, I never notice a difference. And I think it's because I don't have that kind of, um, you know, busy mind all the time anyways. Like I don't have a lot of voice, you know, I don't, I don't talk to myself and I don't have negative self-talk and things like that. Um, so I just don't have a lot going on in there probably because I've offloaded the whole mental load into my systems. Uh, so I don't do meditation, but yeah, exercise is incredibly important to me and reading as well. I just do all those things in the evening. Mm, Okay. You have an evening routine going on. Yeah. So I have an evening routine in order to make my morning routine really efficient. Yeah. And successful and quick. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because that for me, you know, that sleep is the most important thing I can do to make sure that I'm having a successful day. Absolutely. Yeah. This has been um, insightful. I just want to recap for um, our listeners um, the importance of a brain dump. Um, get it on paper. Get it out of your head. Um do a calendar, get a checklist going on so that you can prioritize 
for what's important. And you don't have to do it all in one day. The world was not built in one day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I really like that. And then you, when you talked about how entrepreneurs can prioritize effectively, giving the multitude of hats they have to wear in their business, you said they need to start saying no. And that stands true because you really got to, um, this, you got to make a decide effectively, um, mm-hmm. what you're going to do. Um, because you can't again, try to, um, tackle it all, all on one day, all, all at once. And another point that you made, Alexis, was that saying not right now to your things on your to-do list, mm-hmm. which is, I, yeah. which is crucial. It's, um, it, it comes down to prioritizing what's important, your top three, and then the rest of them, you can do them the following day, but putting them on paper so that they're out of your head is really effective. Yes. And then the other thing that you mentioned was setting boundaries. And we talked a little bit about that is having an end time when you're going to turn off the emails, you're going to turn off the phone, you're going to leave work, you're going to leave the office when you're going to leave for the weekend, <laughs> 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 whatever it means is, is honoring that, that setting those boundaries that, and allowing other, letting people know the, what they are so they can respect it and, and give you that peace of mind that you, you so desire. Yes, Exactly. Yeah, that's um, anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, I think what you pointed out, I think here and what we talked about, I think is is really important that the kind of mindset around tasks and things that, yeah, there will be more to do tomorrow. There will always be more to do tomorrow. I, yeah, I like to yeah. say, you know, we're going to die someday with a big long list of stuff we didn't do. And that is okay. That is part of life. Uh, what's important is that we've prioritized the important things. So that's what's left, what we didn't get to was just, the less important things. Yeah, well put. Tell us, how can we connect with you? So you can go to my website. It's alexishasselberger.com. So hopefully you'll put that in the show notes because no one can spell my last name. <laughs> um, I am also on Instagram at do.more.stress.less. And then you, if you would like to get your own distraction minimization action plan so that you can spend a f- couple of minutes setting up your environments for success so that you can remove some of those distractions and save a lot of time, uh, you can go to alexishasselberger.com slash subscribe. Uh, you'll get my weekly newsletter and you will also get that immediate distraction minimization action plan. You've heard it here first, morning enthusiasts. This has been Alexis and all that will be on the show notes for you to connect with her. Alexis, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. It was great to be here. It was a pleasure. Well, all right, morning enthusiasts, that's it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in. If you love the best morning routine ever podcast, we'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and subscribe, rate, and give a review on iTunes or Google Play. While you're at it, tell a friend about the show. Be sure to visit bestmorningroutineever.com and our Facebook group to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic free bonus content. Until next time.